Hi, I'm Kate Lane, and this is South Asian Living. Today, we're getting a glimpse of Afghanistan. Usually, when you think of Afghanistan, you think of the war and the conflict, but what you don't get to see is their beautiful culture. So in the next half hour, we're gonna be looking at clothing, music, and carpets. But first, I wanna start with this beautiful artwork that's surrounding us, and I'm joined with Marufa Shinwari. You were a refugee 20 years ago, and this artwork isn't usually uh, displayed on television, so it's really exciting today. But this particular artist is actually your husband, who's yes. pictured here, Yar yes. Taraki. Yar Taraki is my husband. And this photo here, what's so interesting about this? Because you have the gun down here and the culture dancing. Uh, as you know, you know, as an Afghan, um, we all experienced war for the last 30 years. Mm -hmm. And the message that Yar uh, Taraki wanted to give to the um, Afghan community uh, in Afghanistan and here. Uh, this is the time for uh, you know leaving your mm -hmm. uh, guns and uh, uh, showcase your tradition. As you see in this picture, men are dancing, and the group dance called Atan. Mm -hmm. uh, so inter um, national Atan uh, Afghani dance called Atan, and uh, he showcases that men are happy. Um, instead of um, sending message of war, uh, it's happiness. Because I so, think what a lot of people don't realize is the Afghanistan community doesn't want to be fighting. They want to be happy, like which is portrayed here in your husband's artwork. That's so true. Uh, for the last 15 years, Yor Taraki, he gave his time mm -hmm. uh, to um, paint only about uh, mus musical instrument that uh, in Afghanistan uh, was used for decades. Mm -hmm. uh, so as you see, again, this is a dance uh, playing, you know, different uh, instruments. Uh, they, the color is very warm, peaceful, and uh, he shows movement of happiness and peace uh, to the community. So um, uh, even if you, um, this is my, my favorite picture because girls and women are dancing. Of course uh, they which are. Is, uh, which is, uh, in, in Afghani culture, you know, it's not that much known outside mm -hmm. uh, of the nation. And uh, they think that, you know, Afghans are always with hijab and, uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, we, were, uh, we have rich, you know, culture and uh, art. As you see, it's very beautiful. Um, she looks you know, like she's thing. dancing very beautifully. Exactly. So, um, more music, these more are our art. collection. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, our home collection. Um, it's all on the walls in your home. On the walls. And, uh, very beautiful home, I bet. Um, <laughs> uh, we love. You know, we have a very artistic uh, family. My son is uh, an artist, mm -hmm. and uh, my husband, uh, for the last forty years, he's painting. Um, all of them in its home collection, and um, most of it nobody sees before it's first time in your. This uh, is the first time. Show. I'm very excited to be one of the first people to yes. see this beautiful artwork. So obviously he was around before the war started, so he was able to remember all of these fantastic moments and the culture. But this photo here, in particular, in particularly, shows really the death of music of when the war broke out. Yes, you're so so right, and this is the true. Uh, he wanted to emphasize the uh, the very dark. Uh, time of mm -hmm. the history in Afghanistan when music um, painting, nothing was allowed for people to do and uh, the Taliban time um, was uh, you know, uh, kind of you know, shut the history of art and culture in Afghanistan down and uh, as, a, as, a, as an artist he, although the colors are bright beautiful, amazing but still the music, the music is you know, yeah. not allowed and this is a symbolic, um, you know, painting, uh, which continuing uh, to the uh, to the next one again. Right. You know, another death uh, he of cannot music. Play because yeah, uh, you the, see, the war. Uh, it's yeah, uh, the music is not allowed. You know, his uh, hand is uh, here. You know, meaning is you know you mm -hmm. cannot play. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, we we experience as a family. Um, uh, Almost 12 years we were in, uh, we experienced refugee life and uh, in, in the north we, we lived in Uzbekistan, we moved to Pakistan uh, for a short while, we came back and while we were in Pakistan, this is the uh, art uh, work painting of your. It's very uh, famous as I understand. very famous, 20 years ago, you know, he painted when he came back after the, um, uh, visiting a refugee mm -hmm. camp, uh, the girls that you see, uh, it's a portrait of um, a young uh, 
uh, girl, she, she died uh, having fever in three days. And uh, wow. he couldn't, he said, you know, uh, the face and uh, that um, the segment that he saw in his life, he couldn't forget. And this is, uh, the, he Captured came out perfectly. and he captured it. She has hope in her eyes, hoping for the future. Yes, and many, and um, unfortunately, didn't happen for her. But many of other uh, immigrants, like you know, my family, mm -hmm. uh, we we had the same hope. But you know, we we came to Canada, and uh, thank God, my family is safe now. Mm -hmm. So, so coming to Canada, it, it's hard leaving behind your culture and your your country. It's not that you don't love your country. You... That's why you know, my family, we try to uh, showcase our culture and. Um, um, as much we could, uh, we tried to capture uh, Afghan carpet, mm -hmm. Afghan clothing, uh, jewelry, and um, you know my my husband's uh, collection is um, fabulous. You know uh, a heritage that we brought and we ha we add mm -hmm. to uh, Canadian society. Um, this is one of my favorite. <laughs> I love this picture. I don't know why, but this is something that um, it gives me. Uh, I you know the music comes to my to my head when, hear when I see yes mm -hmm. I can hear what uh, he's playing, and uh, this is a culture that uh, we wanted to um, uh, send from generation to generation. And mm -hmm. uh, when Yor he came to Hamilton, that's why he established the um, Immigrant Culture and Art Association. Mm -hmm. uh, he's one of the founder uh, to continue the style of the art that he he's doing. And he was teaching um, young generation and students uh, art. Um, uh, so when you came in 1996, um, if can I interject, how did you leave your country? Oh, it was it was a um, disaster, you know, moments of our life that you never forget. Mm -hmm. uh, when I left, um, there was no transportation, uh, nothing, just uh, rockets was from all over. Um, my husband and my um, brother-in-law uh, took me and my uh, three children. Um, he, my oldest daughter, Hila, she was three. Uh, my son was two years and my youngest was nine months. Wow. So with three children uh, by myself, mm -hmm. um, was um, with no visa, um, a crossing uh, border. And, uh, you know, when I came in front of the um, officer, I said, um, I'm with three kids uh, to go back because I'm educated. My background is law. I was teaching law in faculty mm -hmm. uh, of um, uh, law faculty in Kabul University. Uh, so if I go back, I, they will kill me. And, uh, you know... They let you in. As a human being, they understood, and uh, they let me come in. And I was walking uh, through this, um, you know, border. and uh, You walked all the way to the border? You didn't take a bus? Yes. Uh, no, no. You just you, walked you, for... You just walked because you don't trust. And, uh, you know, the refugee uh, experience is make you to uh, lose your trust. Mm -hmm. And it's, it, it became very difficult for long uh, years, for many uh, years that uh, you trust again. Of course. Um, so that's why um, it was a sad story. And not for, only for me, for many other Afghans. For example, for uh, Fahim. Fahim, Fahim Atta is one of the um, famous artists, Afghan artists. He has his master's degree. Again, he's more than 40 years is uh, painting. Wow. And, and he's very young. Um, you know, he's um, 40 something, but <laughs> and when he, he was that very long. young, you know, he said to me that five years, he was five years old that he started painting. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, and after that, uh, he finished his education uh, in, uh, in Russia. Yep. And uh, he got in his master's degree. As you see, the refugee. Um, uh, Beautiful painting, the detail in it is. Impact his mind as well. And uh, his painting, this painting, emphasized that a family, they are living. They are, um, mm -hmm. you know, because of war, their... they are leaving their homeland. So they are moving. His uh, artwork captures just the beauty of Afghanistan, while your husband's captures the culture. Yes, the... yes. And uh, he's very detailed, mm -hmm. as, as you see. You can you know, see. Um, he focuses on, on detail, and his methods are um, a little bit different. Um, again, if you look at his pictures. Looks like a photograph, uh, actually. At, at, uh, at his art, at painting, you know, it shows that, um, again, peace. Um, he he tried to capture nature, which is symbolic to us, you know, when peaceful. we see, yes, peaceful. And the colors are amazing. It's very bright. It's light. Very vivid. Very natural, yeah. Well, I think coming up next, you mentioned your daughter, Hila, is your oldest. Now she's a young woman, and she's going to be introducing us to the clothing of Afghanistan. So be sure to stay tuned, because coming up next, we have Hila talking about clothing. We 
we're just looking at some of the very beautiful and vibrant artwork, but I think somebody could argue that fashion is also artwork because Gila, from the dress that you're wearing, it's all handmade. Yes, it is. Um, so my family is from the province of Ghazni. Mm -hmm. uh, Afghans are very diverse people, and so um, the traditional clothing often reflects different part of the country. Um, so this was made by my great aunt many years ago, mm -hmm. and traditionally um, the clothes are usually made for, for younger generations, and then they're kind of passed on. Um, but, but I have some, some of the guys' clothes here too I brought with me. Mm -hmm. um, so these are called chapan, and they okay. are for um, men. So men right. wear them. They're like long. You'll see uh, the Afghan president wearing them all the time, mm -hmm. Karzai. Um, and so these are made by hand, of course, but with some machine in them. Um, if we move down, these are by hand completely, and they're very delicate. Yeah, you can see the intricate detail on them. Yes, and, um, and, and so these are called Kandori Duzi. They're from the province of Kandahar, which we often hear about mm -hmm. in the news. Um, so men wear a long shirt with like pants, mm -hmm. and it's sometimes accompanied with a vest. Everything's handmade. Um, as for the women, while the styles are very different, all of the clothes have heavy embroidery around um, the sleeves. Mm -hmm. um, and the also bodice, handmade as well? Yes, Perfect. yes. And uh, the bodice mm -hmm. is also handmade. And then at the bottom of the skirt is like a thick lining of, wow. of um, embroidery. So regardless of where it's from, it's always handmade in the three sections. So clearly your mother didn't let you forget about your culture. Yes, no, that's, that's definitely true. Um, this piece here is actually really interesting. It's something that um, nomad groups would wear. Wow. So this was actually from someone who, who used to wear this, and my, my father bought it and brought it with him because he knew that this would be something very um, culturally relevant and mm -hmm. important. And so these should be able groups, to showcase it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's very beautifully made by hand. Um, even the colors here and the little mirrors are stitched in. Um, and then these are groups that don't stay fixed in one place. They move as move the around. resources. Well, I like to always say that jewelry is like the icing on the cake. Right. So I, this I jewelry agree. right here is incredible. And this um, is all from your personal collection. Yes. Uh, so my dad's been generous. Very. And uh, he always tends to bring us a little bit of this or that. Um, the difference between Afghan jewelry and other South Asian jewelry is that uh, it's mostly silver. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, historically, gold was used for trade, and silver right. would be used for to ornament jewelry. Mm -hmm. um, but mostly, they use precious stones, which are real. Well, so, I think um, another aspect of your art and your culture is carpets, and I think you're going to tell me a little bit about that? Yes. All right. right. Well, let's head over and check out the carpets. Great. In the last segment, Hila, we talked about clothing and how your mother, who is Marufa for everybody at home that may not know that, how she instilled the Afghan culture into you. And part of your culture is the very famous Afghan carpets and rugs. Right. We have some of these behind me. And what are the parts of the rug that make it authentic? Um, Afghan carpets are very famous. Um, usually they look like this in movies or um, in, in, in any pictures or websites that you search them. And they feel very durable. They're actually made of uh, wow. sheep wool. Really? Um, and what makes them authentic is that this design is probably the only one that exists. It's so a, they're, a, so a they're unique, a unique handmade, one of a kind piece. So they're not mass produced. You can't go get them at IKEA. No, not at all. So they're not. Uh, uh, the way that they're made is not uh, through like industrial means. Mm -hmm. It's usually one or two women working on something like this, and and they feel very like rough. Um, you, very, you can yeah, walk durable. on them, uh, they can be exposed to sunlight, and, and carpets like these last hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, I think 
what I was when I was reading about this, I found that in in 1949 mm -hmm. they found a, a carpet like this from the fifth century. Really, um, in, in the mountains. Uh, wow. It's, it's in an, in a museum in Saint Petersburg mm -hmm. now in Moscow. I mean in in Russia, but it looks and feels just like this, and the colors are the so same. So maintained, maintained everything, very completely. durable. Um, and, and the colors, both the, the red and the black, are, are made through natural means, through different, you know, bushes and things like that. They're not synthetic. They're not synthetic. at all. So they're all natural. Yes, all natural. That's amazing. And so you are very knowledgeable on this subject, and you were three years old when you left Afghanistan. Yes. Do you remember leaving at all? Um, um, I do. I, I remember leaving and, and coming to Uzbekistan with my mom and two younger siblings, and I, I, I don't remember lengthy things, mm -hmm. but little snapshots. Um, one that comes into mind is my father playing soccer, and, uh, and all of a sudden people are just like running around, mm -hmm. and there's smoke, and he, he just kind of grabs me and my brother, who is one at the time, mm -hmm. uh, from the back, and, and I just remember being tossed and, you know, yeah. like kind of like Flying not knowing what's going on and he's running. And, and later on when I, when I grew up and I asked him what it was, he, he explained that it was just um, a series of bombs that were, or rockets that mm -hmm. were launched and they were just playing a soccer game. And, and that's what I remember, that he, he grabbed us and he just mm -hmm. like ran home. Well, it's, so. it's nice that you're able to be here today and tell us that story and made it through yes. all of that. Oh, and definitely. be talking about these beautiful, the carpets that come from your culture mm -hmm. and sharing with them, sharing us, sharing with us these beautiful rugs. Oh, so yes. this one over here, and these are all, are these also from your home or are they from um, the bigger Afghan community? Uh, no, all of these are part of our, uh, our family collection mm -hmm. uh, because my father is an artist and right. we appreciate the arts. And we know how valuable um, um, handmade things can be. We we keep keep a series of, car of carpets at home, and hopefully this collection will keep growing. But if you if you feel this one mm -hmm. versus the texture of the one before, excuse me. Oh yeah, you'll see that this feels a little bit different. Mm -hmm. This is actually made of silk. Oh, this carpet. So is not made sheep's of, wool. No. So so the you can thread definitely... here is sheep's wool, but. This bumpy part, right. or the, the softer part, is is, um, wow. is silk, and, and these are the more delicate carpets. Right. So you have to be very careful with them. They're usually displayed and mm -hmm. not really walked on a lot. More and artwork. Artwork. It's very expensive, and you need to be careful with them. Um, and some more over here. They're just incredible pieces of art. Yeah, this is an example of how if, if you do expose it to light, right. um, it may fade a little bit. Yeah, the, the colors will fade a little yes. bit from the sun. And I think we have some more carpets out in the hallway. Yes, You guys we have do. quite the collection here for us Thanks. today. Um, each one is from, even though they were bought in Kabul right. uh, and brought to Canada, each one is, has, has influences from different parts of the country. Mm -hmm. um, so this is an Alakozai carpet. Um, and basically just what that means is it's, it's made from sheep wool.